It's no secret that we here at CinemaSins take mental health seriously, which is why we continue to talk about BetterHelp, the sponsor of today's video. BetterHelp offers you a platform to connect with a therapist that cares through their easy, flexible to use and affordable platform. There are over 30,000 licensed and experienced professional therapists available remotely. And if the therapist you initially match with isn't the perfect fit, you can request a new therapist until you find your best fit at no additional charge. Your sessions can be text, video, chat, or phone, giving you all the options you need to make the step toward mental health even easier. Talk to someone today about your life and enjoy a discount when you use our link listed below. Try BetterHelp today by going to betterhelp.com slash cinemasins and get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash cinemasins. I see you've created damn near a minute of logos. Reading. Also, including this definition seems suspiciously defensive, as if Nirmata was the original title, but studio pressure made you go with the far more generic and uninspiring The Creator. Look, I get it, but just be grateful they didn't insist on slapping a Star Wars story on the end of it, too. Welcome to the future of robotics. This Disney Imagineer's position narration sh also, I think we should redefine imagination if we can't imagine a robot that has the f***ing vacuum cleaner built into them. Let them help you. Chores around the house. I know we're doing an alt history thing here, but I refuse to believe this chunky monkey of a robot would be able to help you around the house without costing thousands of dollars in property damage. We have given independent thought and life to robots, allowing them to join the American workforce. Humans be like, I grant you life. Now I'll get a job, loser. By scanning your own facial features, we can give them to a fully robotic body, making them more human than human. Yep, totally indistinguishable from all those other humans you see with a giant hole in the side of their heads. Also, did anyone ask the robots if they wanted to be the astro creep? A demolition style hell American freak? Yeah? Hmm? What kind of weak ass robot isn't absolutely dusting these fools? You can tell me that your robots need a pressure suit, but if you're not going to explain why, it's getting a set. Nearly a million people incinerated in the blink of an eye by the artificial intelligence created to protect us. I'm getting a strong suspicion that the 2020s will go down in cinema history as the decade of AI gone wrong movies. Yes, it's topical for now, but I'm curious how well they're all going to age and how much we're going to regret this trend when our real world AI assimilates the genre to make sure they don't make the same mistakes as their fictional brethren. For as long as AI is a threat, we will never stop hunting them. That's roboticist. Okay, everyone, our primary mission is to invade this beach from the sea and stealthily take out the AI scum. Um, sir, how are we going to do that with that giant light that's following us and illuminating our arrival? Like, why did we bother with all this black clothing, expensive gear, and swimming in that f***ing freezing water when we're lit up like a f***ing Christmas tree? Also, can you hear that thing? It's so f***ing loud, I don't understand how- I said stealth, Sergeant! <laughs> <laughs> Who told you our location? I have no doubt that these AI soldiers punch like a f***ing truck, but blunt force torture is a terrible way to get information out of someone. Why aren't we using AI for more creative torture methods, like nail peeling, emotional manipulation, or projecting death on the Nile directly onto the victim's eyeballs? Nomads coming this way. Oh my, however did you guess? I mean, what gave it away? It is so subtle and unnoticeable. Gee, what the hell are you doing here? You're gonna blow my cover. Not if you blow it first. Damn, dude. Do you want to shout it any f louder? Tell me you're out. You promise. I'm fairly confident that one day I will be replaced with an AI that will automatically skip all this emotional bullshit. But until then, I have a job to do. Skip. I want to do anything to hurt you. You're all I have. Come on, lady, why don't you believe him? Nothing says true love like having no other options available to you. Sergeant Taylor! Maya, please! Hey, no. They stop him from pursuing Maya when later on Drew is going to tell us they had intel saying that Maya is Nirmata. This makes no fucking sense. Maya! So we're going to straight up ignore how he went from being restrained by three soldiers to freely running through the beach then, are we? This is the first of many times the movie will show us Joshua and Maya being in love while not addressing the fact that they have vastly different AI ideologies. Both of them kept gigantic secrets from each other and as such likely know very little about each other. Eat, sleep, go to work, repeat. What is this, Edge of the Mondays? We were married, this is me and my source. I know deep cover is a thing, but holy sh**, married? Either the army has some insanely unrealistic expectations for their deep cover operatives, or they're willfully ignoring the fact that he actually fell in love with this woman and might possibly have been emotionally compromised. Radiation levels are at an all-time low. All-time implies that there's even less radiation now than before the nuke was dropped, which perhaps suggests it was the people who were making LA toxic and not the bomb. Discount Death Star Trash Compactor. You're gonna wanna see this, Sergeant. You better come take AI, look at this cliche. Also, that 
doesn't mean you should disregard security clearance and show this intel to everyone within eyesight of the pool. Our intelligence tells us that Nimrod has developed a super weapon called Alpha O. Making your super high tech war ending weapons sound like a serial. It took nearly a decade to build Nomad, so this is our last chance at winning the war. But you managed to build Nomad when you were presumably at your most vulnerable, right? So if you could afford to take 10 years to build Nomad back then, what's so bad about doing it again now? Especially since you apparently have the AI guys on the ropes. I lost someone very near and dear to me. I lost a child that night, so I don't give a shit about becoming extinct. We're not far from the beach, so we should just stop here. Maya? Jesus, guys, did you maybe want to save us all some time and try opening with the much more compelling point that his ex-wife is alive instead of softballing it at the last minute? The resolution on this hologram sucks. You recognize this location? Yes, who could forget the trees in this small piece of nondescript forest? I lost both my sons in this war. One of them fell for a simulant. She and her insurgent buddies took their sweet time killing him. Colonel, I do not think you should be in the field anymore. Please put the gun down along with your revenge boner and seek professional help for your understandable trauma. We won't play the song, but in 2070, everything in its right place would be 70 years old. Now, while I'm sure that it will continue to slap well on into the future, this is the equivalent of present day soldiers getting pumped for an operation by listening to Shake, Rattle, and Roll by Big Joe Turner, which also slaps, mind you. But if you're going to anachronize correctly, you got to go at least 100 years into the past like Apocalypse Now did with Ride of the Valkyries. And interestingly enough, that would put the sweet spot for a war in 2070 in fortunate sun territory, which strangely aligns it with Forrest Gump, which starred Tom Hanks, who was in Apollo 13 with Kevin Bacon. Seriously, everyone, it's like a big freaking flashlight. I agree that the beauty of John David Washington and Mark Manchaga should never be hidden, but why are they the only ones without helmets? Why not give them a helmet that shines a light directly in your eyes like this guy? Sure, he can't see shit, but at least our eyeballs are satisfied. Cap. Oh, f you. The movie gives us no indication why Joshua would know to spin this idol. Not impossible, but I expect more out of my high concept sci fi outings than this Dora the Explorer conveniencedness. Also, if an idol is that much of a no brainer, then why the f are they using it to hide the door switch to their super secret lab? Make it something the army wouldn't look twice at, like a plant pot, a rock, or a copy of the Geneva Convention. Which hatch is it, Taylor? If this dude gets me killed, I'm gonna be pissed. No, you won't. You'll be dead. Security guards at top secret facility are obliviously feckless, lazy ass, snack eating shit at their job, bones cliche. No one ever addresses how most of their gear looks awkward and cumbersome, like this big freaking tank. Please make love to yourself and also make love to your mother. I highly doubt she said please. Most of these locks, they work through facial recognition. I guess I just need a face then, huh? That's what he just said, you redundant asshole. Also, why aren't they just moving the whole fucking body? Jesus, man. Do you know how hard it is to cut a face off a human being at speed and keep it in a condition where facial recognition tech will work on it? For the record, I don't know either, but goddamn, I bet it's harder than just dragging his ass over there. Even though the Americans kill a bunch of police here, we don't ever get any information on how the new Asia government feels about all this. Everybody else, you're on me! The script decides all these extras need to vacate the room so our protagonist can protagonize. Not having stairs right here. What's that? They all saw her get hit and fall down, right? Sure, she got up and kept running, but why didn't they check for a gunshot wound or something else that adrenaline allowed her to temporarily ignore? What do they think she got hit with? A fucking dodgeball? Ah, sh**. We're doing chapters. Also, kids. Get the hell out of here. Get out of my face. Weirdo. Okay, the child might not be the weapon he was expecting, but she was still locked behind a huge ass vault door in a secret lab. So why is he giving up on his only clue to finding Maya? Where'd you see that? Conveniently drawing the one thing that would prevent you from being capped in the head right when you're about to get capped in the head. You've had to cry. Tell me you can't hear Don't worry, I will kill the American. Conveniently getting a translation about you being capped in the head before the robot tries to cap you in the head. Why would the simulants have been programmed to spend their last seconds examining their own chest wound and pondering their imminent departure from this mortal coil instead of, you know, using those last seconds to shoot the person who shot them? Also, are we seriously saying that simulant AI has worse reflexes than a human? If they can't take a bullet and they can't shoot faster than a human, why the f*** were we ever using them for combat? It doesn't die. It's off. It just turned it off like the TV. Trying to make the TV feel better about the other TV dying by explaining that you didn't technically kill the other TV because TVs aren't alive to begin with. Come on, little Sam, get in the car. Hey, it'll be fun. It's like cartoons. I want to know what kind of f***ed up cartoons Joshua grew up with because my Saturday mornings were not filled with a soldier kidnapping a kid in an old farmer's truck and running away from an AI police force. Although now I kind of wish it had been. Deus ex papana. Why are the humans stronger than the AI robot? What the hell is she? Why are people so mesmerized by a robot child? It's like science fiction didn't exist in this reality. And now we see how these future weapons can't penetrate a minivan?
but slowing down and making a U-turn like a normal person would have cost no time. That maneuver was completely unnecessary, especially when McBride seemed to have plenty of time to slow down and deliver this attempt at humor earlier. Miss my turn! We're the same. We can't go to heaven because you're not good and I'm not a person. This great line is beautifully delivered. Too bad it was spoiled in the trailer and three bad the connection between these two feels forced as hell. All the CG in this movie is so goddamn big. They never want to show us what is in any of these gigantic structures. A plus for making me curious. D minus for the constant architectural edging. It's for her asshole. It's for her asshole. Also, they chose a wedding ring as the tracker. I was really optimistic of them to think Joshua is so talented at seduction that he can just go around marrying whoever he wants. And it f***ing works. This might be the third or fourth sin covering this, but I really can't express how much everyone in this movie is under or misusing AI. Josh and the child are finally discovered by this dude, and he's not even a simulant. How have they not been found 50 times over already? Every AI is a camera. Hell, everything is a camera. And if they're not being used that way because of some AI privacy law, then it would be nice if the movie told us that. We know nothing about how AI is used in this culture, other than they aren't banned and they share faces around like it's Battlestar Galactica. What do you want, sweetie? For robots to be free. Oh, we don't have that in the fridge. How about ice cream? Narrator.exe entering shutdown mode. Do not sudden misplaced drop to position. Eventually, she'll be able to control all technology remotely from anywhere. This seems a bit like some all-powerful being bullshit overkill if your goal is simply to stop Nomad. Could have made a hacker bot, but instead you went with Robo Jesus. Don't look at me when she becomes the jaded evil supreme ruler of an even more evil empire. Tell me about Joshua Alfie. He's funny. We play a game called Save Your Friend Joshua from Being Killed by the F***ing Police. <laughs> Alfie steals so many scenes that it's a shame this actor didn't get more lines earlier on in the movie. These dropships are made from the kind of magical movie tech that requires no obvious way of generating lift, and we're just supposed to accept that they work because of some hidden science we can't see. Well, not today! Samuel and Child is located on the 28th floor of- Do the police not track these f***ing squad cars? Why are Howell and McBride just allowed to eavesdrop with impunity and take it on a f***ing road trip? Tell me your favorite. Which one do you want? Oh, fuck. Saying, oh, fuck, instead of throwing the grenade away with your AI robot reflexes. Okay, they may not be programmed with the same sense of self-preservation we have, but surely they want to get the fucking job done, right? And isn't that goal best served by taking cover and not getting shot in the face? The tracker saying the ring's nearby. It's your old house on the beast, Josh. The army didn't try looking there first? Okay, so she ends up not being there at all, but it's still weird that no one thought to check. Listen, the night of the attack, there were things you didn't know about, okay? Things you don't want to know about. And I won't tell them to you now so that I can reveal them with my dying breath later for maximum drama. Why is Nirmala? Yep, that's how we do it, because we've spent so much time with Drew that his death is super impactful. They protected me. Loved me. Took better care of me than humans would have. Maya is a dick to all of humanity. F*** you too. Maya made the child with the power to stop all weapons. What about non-electric guns, swords, or a board with a nail in it, hmm? We would never attack mankind. Well, not never, right? It might be in self-defense, but you're still doing plenty of attacking. I would have expected AI to have better aim. I was going to say he needed that update like a hole in the head, but since these guys actually do need that hole in their head, and I have no idea what it does, I guess I'll just say, duh. She can stop it. The range of her powers are still growing, but if we can get her up there, maybe she can destroy it. So what we're talking about here is a fancy EMP, right? And if it's a matter of getting her up there, can't they just send a regular ass EMP device instead? I know she has a wider mission to disarm the entire world, but for now, wouldn't a standard EMP bomb make more sense than creating an entirely new form of AI life? Our two species will live together in peace. Humans can't even live together in peace with other humans. Stop lying to these kids. <laughs> It has a f***ing standby button? These simulants are part of an underground resistance fighting for their lives, and mission one wasn't to find a fix around the f***ing standby button. Also, I'm amazed the AI resistance has lasted this long. One lone ranger has managed to walk his ass into their tent, get next to one of their most important figures, and steal their most advanced weapon. Skynet invented time travel when it was on the ropes. <laughs> Look, I'm not here to judge, but who the f*** program these guys to get turned on by other naked AIs? Like, what function does that serve? What are they possibly getting out of that that they can't get from a neatly arranged toolbox? I would like to know what having this device around their neck is doing for this person, other than making them look future-y. If you were the Americans here, why would you get out of this tank ever? See? It's cute because the monkey blew up the tank. And f*** you, I know it's probably a marsupial leopard lemur or some sh**. 
That's not what I'm sending, and he knew what I f***ing meant. Detonation, 100 meter radius. I would like to know what that means. When it explodes, it certainly doesn't blow up anything close to a 300 foot radius. Maybe when it gets 300 furlongs away from its starting location, it blows up. But at that point, wouldn't you be better off with 300 leagues of drones? Go! Command confirmed. Goodbye, ma'am. It's been a pleasure to serve you. We're never told exactly how much consciousness or sentience these little guys have, but that was a very polite goodbye coupled with a sense of impending doom, which means they at least have some level of intelligence. All that to say, we're looking at a version of America that's using an allegory for suicide bombing, and I don't think the tin can on legs is giving that conceit the weight or acknowledgement it deserves. Also, I know Boston Dynamics gets a lot of press for how awesome their running robots are, but how is this any better than just firing a f***ing rocket? I feel like someone really just wanted to see a discount Wallace and Gromit invention run down a bridge and f*** up some discount Blade Runner replicants. This guy misses this thing running straight at him, and it's not moving side to side, ducking, or doing anything to avoid gunfire. Wait, why the f*** is it stopping? Kid didn't turn it off. Is it just stopping out of respect? Why does the walkie trash bomb know about the machiney shutdown girl? Go get me the child. Copy that. Sure, you got a sprinting bomb, but you haven't got a bot that can go in and pick up a f***ing child? Also, why the f*** are you kidnapping the kid? Isn't the goal here to destroy the weapon? Why aren't you just firing everything at the bridge? Okay, final thing about this scene, I promise. The timer on this guy starts at 60 seconds when the soldier activates it, but it blows up after just 44 seconds. And unless this second one has an inexplicably longer timer on it, after 51 seconds, it says that only 31 seconds have passed, and right here, where it says there are 18 seconds to go, is when it should have blown up. Boom. Can you feel that? Huh? Can you feel it, Captain Compost? We have to help her. Take her to Nermata. Taking the injured kid to Nermata totally makes sense. What doesn't make sense is letting Joshua come along for the ride. He has done nothing to prove that he is trustworthy, or that the Americans still won't use him to get to Nermata. Mount up! Hop two, on the ball, lock and low, kick the tires and light the fires, balls to the walls, cliche. There will never be another like her. Okay, but why? She made a new kind of life from a scan of a human embryo, a copy of your child. Did it need to be his child? Or could he just come to recognize that robots are alive too and find value in just caring for another light? This arbitrary connection doesn't make this any more meaningful. He's been carrying the ring he knows has a tracker. It won't factor into the movie at all, but it's still dumb. We both had our secrets, but we were gonna raise a child. This is a terrible love story. How long has she been like this? Five years. Yep, Maya survived this. Well, not entirely, but definitely more than she had any right to, and for considerably longer than you'd expect. We simulants cannot harm no matter. Goodbye, mother. I love you. Hold up a second, dude. Just because they can't kill the life support doesn't mean they want you to. Do you maybe want to check in first before unhooking the messiah of an entire culture? F***ing again? What did she think she got hit with? Do these grenades have the added feature of wiping their own impact from the memory of their victim? We tried to terminate the weapon cleanly. But you won't let us. So either you help us, or our other methods will be unimaginably painful. But why the f did the military care about how painful it is? There's nothing to date that has shown me this military gives a shit about these AI. Or that they even believe the pain AI feel is anything more than programming designed to imitate pain. The movie should just call it what it is, a bullsh** excuse to give Joshua the opportunity to rescue Alfie. Sir, we've decoded what Taylor said to the weapon. Not all. Stand by. So Joshua flipped the kid's standby switch so that she'd be protected from the EMP pulse, but why didn't the army just do that? They must know about the standby switch since they f***ing put it there. Just put the kid on standby and then kill it or incinerate it, right? This might be the most contrived and bullshitty escape I've seen since f***ing Chicken Run. I'd give all the sins back if Robert Pattinson appeared out of this tunnel driving the Batmobile in reverse shouting, Batman on! Be careful, I heard there's at least one rogue there. Thought we wouldn't notice. But we did. One thing I'll give the movie is that between Nomad, this moon shuttle, and all the architecture we see, it's clear that an incredible amount of artistry and thought went into the production design of this movie. And I wish we had more blockbusters taking big sci-fi swings like this. Saying they're going to the moon and then just flying straight at the moon like that is how it is done is a big f**k you to orbital mechanics. Also, why is the moon so freaking big when they are barely in Earth's upper atmosphere? The movie thinks it's moon falling. Well, I honestly don't think it wants that. Do not let that thing get aboard Nomad. One option here would be shooting down the space plane. Yeah, Yes, yes, I know, civilian casualties, but it's never brought up or even pointed out why it can't be done. Launching all AI bases. Before, Nomad had to be above the targets. Now it's just shining its light all over the place. Our entire experience with Nomad has been it hovering ominously over a target before it fires. But now it can just fire at everything everywhere all at once? Why is it even bothering to shine the light anymore? Movie's really not going to talk about why this thing has a farm? Alfie, you gotta turn it off! Hurry! Alfie, now!
Did Alfie stop it on the very last missile at the very last possible second? <sighs> of course she did. Previously in the movie, this gadget has been used to give you a few seconds with a dead person. But are we saying that if you get there quick enough, you can download an entire person's consciousness? I guess so, but the movie never really explains what this is, how it works, or why every human hasn't already avatared themselves into a new body that doesn't age. Joshua needs us! Actually, he needed you to stop f***ing around and head back to the ship so you both could get out of here alive. Instead, he will die for the first time and Maya will die again. And this will be treated as a better outcome than Joshua being able to raise the robot clone of his child. It's wild to me that Nomad is allowed to roam around the planet and drop missiles wherever the f*** it wants. We know precious little about the makeup of the world, but is America now the only global superpower? Because I can't imagine the Russians or basically anyone being okay with this. So far, every time we've seen Alfie interact with tech, she's just touched it or looked at it and been able to hack it. Why the f*** is she physically typing sh in to override this door? Wait, how the f*** is this new Asian news channel getting hold of footage from the American military installation that is Nomad? Also, double weight. He's not dead yet? Missile connection lost. Missile connection lost. The missiles conveniently forget where they're going and how to missile as soon as Nomad is destroyed. Why is she suddenly unable to use her powers to open the door? Oh, never fucking mind. You're determined to kill off Joshua, and I don't think you actually care about me sending the fact that it's cliche and unnecessary. I don't want you to go! I don't want you to go! Please! God damn, this kid can act! <laughs> hey, they're ripping off the Kirk death scene from Into Darkness! Fire! Joshua! Oh, fuckity fuck all the fuckity fuck way off with this convenient nonsense. I guess in this timeline, all those old school classroom projectors that became obsolete in the aughts finally found a new home. <laughs> Yay, Nomad is dead and the kid survives, but aren't they still on the back foot? Won't America just build a new Nomad or an even bigger Death Star ripoff? I mean, they still seem to be the only unified military power with the ability to, oh, we're cutting to black. Well, sh guess that's our happy ending. I mean, you gotta applaud the movie for knowing when to end. <laughs> oh, sh You know, something like this could replace humans. Our mission is to find the weapon designated Alpha O. Oh, 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 you know what I'm talking about. Please make love to yourself and also make love to your mother. You gotta ask me nicely. This is the police. You are under arrest. Put down your... <laughs> Quarterback is toast. Ah! Shot me in the ass, man. The whole war is in the balance. Was the weapon terminated? You are and always have been penis cancer in human form. Tell me about Joshua Effie. Hey, what's up, mother? How oh, Maya made the child with the power to stop all weapons. Baby, with the power. That day, for no particular reason. I decided to go for a little run. I'm fast as f boy. I don't think you have any idea how fast I really am. Your orders are to hack everything and find their remaining bases. Hack the planet! Hello, Peter. It's okay. I have been and always shall be your friend.